What is good, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with the Tesla spy and video, the QQQ, and a couple of other stickers. I'm going to break down what's happening with the overall pattern on Tesla, in my personal opinion, what's happening with earnings and data that's coming out for tomorrow, not to mention some very important factors that will affect Tesla based off what we're seeing. But before I begin the devil's information, before I get into any more details about the news about Tesla and what's happening with all these different charts from Tesla to spy, NVIDIA, and beyond, let me just mention a couple of things. I am personally not a financial planner, so make sure you take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks. If you deposit $25,000 or more, you're guaranteed 75 of them. And the offer ends very, very soon in just about six days. Anyways, for the markets, I just want to mention that right now for Tesla, we're not looking that great because of the fact that uh, we got this nice little wick that formed over here. We got this big wick at the very, very top. And this was another liquidity grab. And this is oftentimes what happens when we're about to see a reversal very soon to the downside. And we get these like wicks up here. Not a guarantee, but that's what this suggests so far. So it's adding some confluences that, the, you know, this stock could actually dip a bit. But there's no sign of Tesla breaking down yet. I want to make that very clear. We have a range right now. We have this 158 support that's holding it very nicely. We also have resistance at 162.5 and 165. If Tesla loses 158, then yes, we'll have confirmation of downside. And yes, Tesla could dip. We're not really getting that quite yet. So we have to wait and see. Now, I also showed you guys this little pattern, this diamond reversal pattern that we're starting to see forming on Tesla. Uh, this could lead to uh, more potential downside. This is another confluence, but... Nothing is guaranteed until we lose 158. So I just want to keep this in the back of your guys' minds. If you look at the way Tesla's moving right now, it's very similar to this pattern right here. We have that like first peak, the second peak up here. Uh, one more peak could form before we break. We have one peak here, a second peak here. You know, this bottom right here aligns very well with this bottom like this. The structure looks very similar, but don't solely trade based off these. That's what I want to recommend, not financial advice. I wouldn't solely trade based off that. I would look at different factors and levels, of course. So I'll, I'll break down more details about this in just a couple of minutes. I'll talk about SPY and the, the other tickers as well a little bit later. But I first want to talk about some very important data, some news about Tesla that's super important and how this could affect us. So for tomorrow, it's going to be Thursday, April 25th, 2024. At 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the GDP numbers coming out, not to mention initial jobless claims. And this could cause some uh, volatility in the markets. I think initial jobless initial jobless claims, excuse me, tends to be very important. We want that to be between 213 and 214,000. And for the GDP growth rate, we want this to be between 23 and 2.5%. Now, in addition to all of this, I just wanted to call out that... We also have the bill auctions coming out the four week and the eight week bill auctions at 11:30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we'll see what that causes for the markets. But the main pieces of data come out at 11, uh, at 8:30 a.m. an hour before the market opens. So one hour before the market opens at 8:30, that's when we, we should be looking for some data. I'll be here to talk about that as well at this time. So we'll see what that causes for the markets. Expect some volatility one hour before market open and such. And then for earnings, right, we had Tesla's earnings yesterday. This caused a very big move yesterday and also for today. And then for today, we just had Boeing and at and I talked about these with you guys in the morning. And right now, we're looking at Meta, IBM, and Ford, which are announcing their earnings. I think the majority of what the reporting is out already. And for Thursday, which is tomorrow, in the morning, we have Royal uh, Caribbean Group, not to mention American Airlines. And then we also have, after the market closes, Lots of big tech earnings from Microsoft, Alphabet, Intel, Snap, Roku, the list goes on. But Microsoft and Alphabet are going to be two of the big ones. So we'll see how things, excuse me, we'll see how things go. So let's talk about these earnings real quick before I break down news about the markets and Tesla, then start talking about the charts. Meta is currently down 16%, about 16% right now on weak revenue guidance, despite their first quarter earnings not looking too bad. So looking at this right here, you guys could see... That when it comes to the way that they're moving, excuse me, guys, their EPS was at about $4.71 per share. That's above the expectation of $4.32. And their overall revenue is at $36.46 billion above expectations. Revenue is up 27% uh, relative to the same period last year. And net income is also more than doubling right now at uh, over $12.37 billion. So pretty good earnings overall. But there was one problem, one big problem. This one right over here, they're saying that their sales may grow in the second quarter to about 36.5 billion to about 36, 39 billion uh, between that range. So 36.5 to 39 billion. 
The midpoint is about $37.75 billion. That's representing an 18% year-over-year growth. Analysts say that they're expecting $38.3 billion. That's what the expectation was. That is over or very close to $600 million below expectations, which is a pretty big if you kind of think about it. So because of the fact that their guidance is not very strong for the second quarter revenue, the share price is once again reacting kind of negatively to that. On top of all of this, uh, there's also more talk coming out about their uh, overall anticipations. You guys can see that this is changing as well. Their forecasts are actually in line with the prior forecast for the capital expenditures. So that's actually pretty big for them as well. Uh, they're trying to accelerate their infrastructure investments in AI, according to Mark Zuckerberg. And then simultaneously, there's more talk about their headcounts kind of decreasing by 10%. So there's been a lot of talk about them possibly beginning to bleed cash on the metaverse. And there's uh, more talk about their second quarter revenue not being too good. That's part of why the share price is down quite a bit. For IBM, IBM is going to be acquiring HashiCorp in a $6.4 billion deal. Investors are not too excited about this as the share price is down 8%. Uh, that's not solely because of that, but also because of their earnings. So the first thing is they're intending to pay $35 per share in cash for this deal. Not the best uh, deal, at least from the way share prices, the shareholders are kind of like reacting to it. And then the biggest thing that's causing the dip would be this right here. EPS was $1.68, which is pretty good, but their revenue is only $14.46 billion below expectations. So the share price of IBM is dipping as a result of that. Their overall guidance was so-so, so that that's not the main reason why their revenue just wasn't that great. And, you know, there are other reactions from investors. And then finally, we have Ford over here. Ford has topped the first quarter earnings estimates. Uh, they're trying to offset the EV losses, and the share price is up about 2%, so it's somewhat up. They beat on EPS, $0.49. Cents. They missed on revenue at about $39.89 billion, very close to expectations anyways. Uh, their first quarter revenue actually is not too bad. It increased 3%. Net income is also up a little bit, so not too bad. They're also talking about how they want to... Uh, they, they met their guidance overall. They're expected to lose from the EV business, but about 5 to $5.5 billion. And everything else is so-so for them. So guidance was decent. They're trying to cut losses a bit. Their earnings were mixed, and the share price is still up a bit because of that. Anyways, kind of intense earnings, I know. Let's talk about one more thing before I break down Tesla news and then the charts. Uh, right now, the fear and greed index is still at fear. Uh, we're starting to see market momentum shift a bit. We were getting very close to our 125 daily moving average on market momentum. This is still starting to turn a bit. Uh, we're starting to see the puts and call positioning turning down a little bit more, but we'll see if this holds as we're starting to see more weakness in the charts. And the VIX is approaching some key support at the 50 daily moving average around this. Uh, this is going to be very close to about this 14.8 area. So around 15, as this is kind of trending upwards, we might see this thing try to bounce. The VIX is approaching some key support. So we'll see if that ends up being the case. For Tesla, Tesla surges on Elon Musk trying to ride the AI wave. That is, there's a lot of truth behind that. That's why Tesla was up quite a bit, despite the fact that they had some misses in terms of their expectations for Q1. They didn't really talk a whole lot about, uh, you know, potential sales and such as Musk was focusing more on the fact that Tesla's an AI company. That got lots of investors very excited for the future, but just be mindful of the fact that they did miss on EPS and revenue and things could still shift pretty quickly for this company because it's very manipulated and there's a lot of traders and investors that get involved with trying to manipulate the way it moves alongside market makers. Made 181 million in volume, crazy high volume for Tesla. Uh, short volume did start going up relative to its price. So we started to see more shorting on Tesla. And Mizuho gave Tesla a neutral rating. Bank of America Securities gave it uh, an upgrade to a buy rating yesterday. So a little bit of a shift after earnings came out. And then on top of this, the price risk ratio went up temporarily. We'll see if this holds as it's gaining some strength. Thursdays are historically not the best of days for Tesla. We're only green about 47.8% of the time. And look for volatility, 63.8%. Uh, seven nine percent of the time at ten o'clock a.m. and also during the final hour of the day, we tend to be more volatile. So we'll see how things go from here. Now I just want to focus on the charts and just the charts from this point on. So unfortunately, guys, I'm a little bit concerned about Tesla because even though <laughs> excuse me, even though Tesla's green, there are some topping patterns developing on the chart. I showed you guys this diamond reversal pattern that's developing right over here. If you actually compare them side by side, there's a lot of similarities. So. You can see we start off with this nice little push up. Tesla got this little push up forming this like uh, first peak. We came down 
And then we push to form a higher peak, just like how this kind of comes down and pushes to form a higher peak. Then it drops to form a lower low relative to this low. Tesla made a lower low right here from the diamond, the, the diamond bottom. So very similar to this. And then we're just waiting for this thing to kind of like, you know, do form this pattern. We did rebound a bit already. So we'll see if this is the peak right here, or if we go up one more time and then start dipping. And then the next thing is going to be a sell off. So that's what this chart kind of suggests. Uh, that's a possibility for Tesla. And you guys can see the similarities right over here. However, however, it is not a guarantee because of the fact that Tesla has other things awaiting for it. And I want to break down what those are. So from what I'm seeing is Tesla's trying really hard to hold 158. It's trying to hold this support. It's been holding this for quite some time. And we were kind of trading in this range for almost the entire day. If Tesla manages to break through 162.5 a share, yes, it could push back up to 165 or higher. If we do kind of chop around, and if we lose 158, we're going to turn bearish. In my personal opinion, there are some confluences that do suggest downside is very probable for Tesla. The first one is this big wick right here, which is like a liquidity grab. They typically do this when they're getting ready for a move in the opposite direction. And then secondly, we're starting to see Tesla just chopping around this area. They're contracting a bit on the four hour time frame, in my opinion. So the odds favor that Tesla is going to come down to retest 150 and maybe even lose this and start sinking into the mid 150s. But I can't make that promise until we see confirmation of that move. So for now, there is a risk of this dipping, but there's no sign of it dipping yet. I want to make that very, very clear. We need to see this thing lose 158 for us to get that confirmation. And I do think that there's a risk of this dipping. As of right now, we're kind of range bound, but we have a bearish pattern that suggests downside is imminent. So we'll see if Tesla gets a rejection on if we lose 158. If that's the case, look for more downside. I want to make that very, very clear. What do I think is going to happen? My opinion is we might kind of pop one more time and then drop down, or we might just drop down to 158 and lose it. I think that's more probable, but just to be safe, let's wait and see if we lose 158 for confirmation. All right. For SPY, SPY is also showing some weakness. This is because of a shift in the algos, not to mention Meta's earnings and all these different factors like the dollar and the VIX. We rejected off this 507 zone, this 200 EMA came down. And I mentioned to everyone we had this uptrend and watch and see if we hold the uptrend. I told you that if we held this, uh, you know, the chart could still remain on the trend. If we lost it, we would turn back to bearish. And that's what happened so far. So with that being said, watch resistance at this 504 zone. Then we have support at 502. If we lose that, we're coming all the way down to this 500 and 499 range. I think what's going to happen is this might kind of pop a bit, then start dipping, and we're going to be looking for a test all the way down to the 499 area as we have this gap to fill down here. And we have lots of unfinished business. So there's this big gap right here, guys. I know it's a little hard to see. I think that we're going to likely fill that gap. I think that we are due to do that on SPY because it's very, very key. So I think there's a risk of 499 tomorrow. We might pop first and then start dipping. We look like we got a temporary rejection up here. So I think that there's going to be a good sign of downside, and I think that's very probable. For the QQQ, it's the same thing as SPY. We had this uptrend and we kind of rejected right over here after the market closed with Meta's earnings, not to mention algos shifting. So we could retest 423. It's a possibility. And then we might start sinking back down towards this gap fill, which happens to be very close to about, well, the gap will take us down to 420, but we could also dip down to this imbalance at like 417. So I see us coming down to at least 420, if not 418 to 417 very, very soon. I do favor that a bit more on the QQQ. Make sure you look at resistance at 422.75 and then 424.5. Uh, Watch support at 420. If we lose that, we're going to dip lower. I favor us kind of popping, then dropping as the most likely possibility. On the NVIDIA stock, I'm seeing the same thing developing. This is bearish. I said in my morning video, Watch 846 on NVIDIA. If we rejected off that, expect some downside. And that's exactly what happened. We went up here and we got this big rejection. So I think we might pop to retest 795 and then start sinking down to fill this gap at seven in the 760 area. If not, 767 is likely coming. So I expect some downside on the chart. For Apple, Apple is pushing upwards, looking kind of bullish, but we're approaching the 169 resistance. I think that this could actually retrace back down. Uh, we might push to 170 first and then reject or even reject right here around 169.5 and then look for a move back down towards 168 or 20 EMA. We're still outperforming the market, so I think it could still hold up. Performing lots of wicks here might push a bit and then reject or kind of reject from here. So watch for that very, very carefully. With that being said, that's kind of like my assessment on Tesla in the market for now. I'm now going to transition to talking more about other tickers out there and break down how they're looking in my personal opinion. So I'm going to switch over to the four hour just to show you something very interesting. Uh, once again, for SPY, 
The four hour is contracting. This is a big sign of weakness. And I think, think that this could lead to more downside, by the way. So that is what I favor for now. Anyways, let's talk about Palantir and the others. For Palantir, I said that this thing may pop things to Tesla's earnings as we saw some momentum building. Then we'll, we'll have to watch and see if we reject or not. My target was all the way up here around, I was looking at about 22.5 to be tested. We came a little bit short of that. We hit the 22.3 and we kind of rejected off that. So now we're looking a bit more bearish. Might retest 21.39 and start sinking towards 20.5. I favor that a bit more on Palantir. For uh, Supermicro, we're looking a bit more bearish right now. I called that this thing might test 800. If that broke, we could go higher. Uh, we did. We failed to break 800 instead, and now we're coming back down. So I'm expecting this to be re retesting around uh, 708 or, or so, or even lower levels. So I see some downside for Supermicro as a strong possibility. For Rivian, we're on this downtrend. We did push up to about 9.4. That's the target we had. Then we got a rejection immediately. So now it looks to me like it's going to be sinking towards 8.5. I see that as a strong possibility. For SoFi, big rejection right here off this 7.7 .7 area. We talked about this, potentially testing this. We're going to be looking for a move towards 7.38. I do think it's going to come down because of this rejection and because of the fact that we lost our 200 EMA. For the IWM Russell 2000, we're kind of stuck in a range. If we break past 198, look for a push towards 199. And if we lose 196.5, look for a drop all the way down towards 194.5. I favor that this might actually cool off a bit and retest 196.5 and slow down a little bit. So I'm seeing signs of that because it's kind of struggling to break past this 200 EMA. But watch and see which way it breaks for confirmation. For AMD, this is looking a bit more bearish to me. We're kind of turning on our four hour time frame. Going to be looking for a move all the way down towards 147 and eventually 145 all over again. For ARM, we're looking a bit more bearish. I could be looking for a move down towards. So basically, it's going to retest 93. Then below that, we have 87 coming. If that fails, we have a big imbalance to fill all the way down at 80. So watch those three supports 93, 87, then 80. I, if we lose 80, we're going to be coming down to fill that gap. So watch for that. For Coinbase, Watch 221, the 200 EMA. If we lose that, we have a gap to fill all the way down to 210. For uh, Amazon, we're looking a bit more bearish thanks to Meta, and we're kind of sinking with Meta. If we lose 172, we could easily come down to fill this gap at 170. Uh, and then on top of that, we have this breakout way down here. I think that 170 is likely coming. I favor that on Amazon if we lose 172. And I, right now, it looks kind of weak as we got a big rejection off for 50 EMA. We failed to get that bounce, so that is what the chart favors. Meta is down quite a bit. We're going to likely, you know, we will gap down tomorrow. Uh, we could be retesting 405. If that fills us, look for 395 as our next support. I could be looking for more downside, guys. Meta is not looking too good, but just be mindful of that. For Microsoft, we're looking kind of like we're rejecting as well. I think that Microsoft could dip a little bit more now as we got this rejection. I'm going to be looking for a move towards 397. That's a strong possibility or lower. Google's rejecting right here. We could be sinking towards 152. The VIX is trying to bounce on the four hour time frame. I think that 15.5 uh, to 15 is where our support happens to be. So 15.25 to 15.5, we're going to likely test this zone. And then we're, then we're going to be looking for a bounce back up to 16.78. I think the VIX has a gap to fill above. It might bounce. And this would be because of the S&P 500 potentially uh, dropping a bit. So I find that to be very probable looking at the VIX trying to bounce. The 10 year treasury yield is at resistance around 4.65 to 4.7. If we reject here, look for this gap to fill at 4.6. I'll be watching for that. And then finally, we have the dollar index. The dollar is in a very, very critical place. It's trying to rebound, but there's no confirmation of a break yet. If we break past 105.9, look for a push to this imbalance at 106.13. If, if we reject here, we're going to be dipping. It's trying to push, but I need confirmation for us to really determine that. So this does suggest there's a possibility of downside coming. But nothing is guaranteed yet until we see that move. So with that being said, guys, uh, as far as Tesla goes, <laughs> excuse me, we have lots of confluences that suggest Tesla might see some downside. So we'll have to watch just to be safe what Tesla ends up doing. So watch support and watch to see if we could hold 158. If we lose it tomorrow, expect some downside. Be mindful of this. Be careful, guys. I really appreciate every single one of you. And I'll see you guys tomorrow to report some data. Don't forget that tomorrow morning, we have some important data coming out. We have initial jobless claims and GDP numbers. And this could cause some big volatility. So watch for that very carefully. Once again, thank you for listening. I hope you guys have an absolutely splendid day. And I'll see you guys very soon tomorrow morning to report the data. All right. Thank you again. And peace out.